All right, everyone. Last looks. Quiet on set. Roll sound. Sound speed. Roll camera. Camera speed. Scene one, take one. Mark it. And action. Hi, I'm Ed, the host of Savannah on Film, and we explore the economic and cultural impact and values of the film industry in Savannah through conversations with people who work in the industry in related fields. You can find us here on WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul. Hello, the world. Welcome to another episode of Savannah on Film. And our purpose here is to explore the economic and cultural impact of the film industry in Savannah, Georgia, and through conversations with people who work in the industry and in related fields. Uh, we are here on Savannah's number one radio station number one talk radio as well voted by you on the latest connect savannah poll so we thank you very much uh wruu 107.5 fm lp savannah soundings community radio with global soul and welcoming back to the show is a, a good friend of savannah on film and uh his name is rabner amil and he is back welcome back rabner glad to be here thank you we we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff today, but I just want to give you a, a, a quick uh, introduction uh, about uh, Rabner here. He's a producer, director, and actor. Um, he has he's also producing and directing the feature film adaptation of Bob Hostetler's book entitled "They Call Me a Wall." Um, Rabner has also worked on uh, several different television series and, and films. Um, such as the Underground Railroad on Amazon, Legacies on CW, MacGyver, uh, which no one calls me MacGyver <laughs> at all <laughs> on CBS, and Outer Banks on Netflix, among others. And um, they, uh, he's a fine gentleman, and uh, we get to see each other during these days and times of uh, COVID very infrequently. Um, we probably saw each other face to face uh, briefly at the last film mixer. And uh, when we thought things were getting better, um, just a little personal thing here. Um, think about um, we're right now. It's a really tough time with the pandemic uh, kind of getting into the Delta variant. I kind of thought we'd be done with things, but I'm not going to preach to you here. But my personal point of view is get vaccinated um, for yourself and for others and, and let's get this pandemic over and let's continue to get back to work in the industry here. Um, it's, it's almost impossible to not bring up COVID since it's become again, such a, an issue in, in all of our lives. And uh, I'm looking forward to the day when, when we don't have to say the word pandemic and uh but we're not here to talk about the pandemic we're not here to talk about that we are here to talk about film uh that's why you're tuning in and uh this wonderful gentleman here um is uh got a um fundraiser going for his um film and uh we're gonna dive right into it so 
Uh, Rabner, I'm going to let you take the lead here. Uh, tell us about, um, we're going to talk all about, um, they call me AWOL. Uh, first off, um, only, of course, disclose what you can, you know. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh what 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 is what is it about what's what's a, a tagline for they call me a wall right uh, well thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about it first of all um so they call me a wall is a it's a faith based film first of all um and it is a film geared towards teenagers um So the story is about Ben and Ben is a high school kid who is kind of living a double life, right? So he's one person in school uh, and he's a different person in church. Um, And he kind of has gotten very good at it. He's a very good uh, liar. And he's a very, he's a very good uh, kind of like a manipulator of the circumstances around him. Mm Um, and he thinks he has it all figured out uh, until one day his girlfriend from church tells him that she's going to begin attending his school. And so now he has the problem that she's oh. going to figure out, um, you know, his reputation at school and who he is outside of church. So, you know, uh, he comes up with a plan to basically, you know, instead of being truthful with her, he comes up with a plan to change his reputation at school and change everything that he's been doing for the last two years in basically two weeks. Um, And of course, shenanigans ensue, and that's where the movie happens. Cool. Uh, What drew you to to, uh, wanting to um, direct and produce this film, which is going to be a feature film, by the way? Yes. Yes, correct. It's going to be a feature length film. Um, So this movie is based on a book. Um, It is a book that was published in 1994. So, um, and it's a book that I read when I was a teenager. Um, So it's always been in the back of my head as one of those things where I'm just like, oh, you know, this this would make a good movie. You know, it's just kind of back there. Um, But then uh, during the pandemic, (laughs) here we go with the pandemic again. Yeah. (laughs) Um, During the pandemic, when everything was shut down, you know, the entire film industry shut down and everything, the entire world shut down, right? We all know what happened in 2020. Um, During that time, I was talking to a very good friend of mine and she kind of, you know, we were talking about a, a movie idea that she had, and I was talking about a movie idea that I had, whatever, and the subject of this book came up, and she kind of convinced me, and she was like, well, why don't you do it? And I was like, well, you know, I don't know if that was the right time, whatever. I'm kind of one of those people that I always, you know, I'm always waiting for the right time to do something, and sometimes you kind of just have to jump in. Right, um, the, uh, otherwise, you know, the right time never comes. <laughs> correct, correct. You have to make the right time happen. Um, so, and so she gave me that little extra push and I reached out to the author, Bob Hostetler, and we clicked and it was great. And, um, we came to an agreement and I ended up buying the rights to the book. Yeah. And, um, so, so we know what brought you to that. Um, what are your thoughts about the whole production? Cause production, has not started yet, correct? As of the recording. Correct. No, no, no. We are still in the development stages of this project. Okay. Um, no, production has not started. Uh, we hope to start it next year, but mm-hmm. it has not started yet. Correct. Okay. And um, you, you guys are, are doing, um, along with uh, Christine Rebuck, if, um, are, are yes. organizing a fundraiser around it, uh, a GoFundMe for They Call Me AWOL. Um, how is that going? Uh, What was that process like? And, uh, you know, I I looked at it first off and, and and I'm like, wow, these are actual scenes from the film, but you know, you know, explain the process maybe for for those who don't know. Correct. Um, so, okay. So no, they are. So what, what, uh, Ed is referring to is the video that we have 
on the GoFundMe page right now. We have a GoFundMe page to raise up money for the budget of the film. Um, you can look it up very easily. It's uh, They Call Me AWOL. Just look it up on GoFundMe or you can look up on Facebook. We just put up a Facebook page only a few days ago. Um, you just look up on Facebook, They Call Me AWOL and it'll come up immediately. Um, so what he's talking about is the video that we have on there. Um, no, those are not actual scenes from the film because we have not made the film yet. Um, those are scenes that we filmed for the purpose of the GoFundMe video. We filmed them as kind of a concept film almost. Um, and it worked out great. Um, so yeah, the process of that was kind of strange because it's almost like you're editing footage that doesn't exist yet, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of come up with the edit first and then you shoot it but so does that prepare you a little bit it, it, i mean it already gives you um an idea of what the film is obviously which it's meant to do um so right. you know those scenes who knows a version of those scenes may end up in the movie because it does kind of explain the movie a little bit um not everything because you don't want to give everything away but um so um so um what what are your actors in it or can you say or um so no we do not um the cast has not been cast yet it's not been cast. Um, okay no. yeah. so the actors that you see in the concept video are they were just participating for the purpose of that video that does not mean that they are going to be in the film who knows what's going to happen in the future but right. don't think that everyone that you see in the video is the set cast for the film because they're not and they knew that going in uh, they just had that job for that video um we partnered up with a church uh called uh evangel in orlando florida actually and uh that's where we shot most of the video uh so evangel orlando church uh helped us with the location and uh, some of the people in the video are from that church, and some of them are actors that responded to a casting call that we made in Florida. So what are your aspirations for the success of uh, this film? So the main goal for me with this film is to make let me let me go back and basically say it goes back to why I got into filmmaking. Okay. Um, and that is because I want to make movies that have a positive impact on the world. That is what I desire. That's the desire of my heart is to make movies that have a positive impact on the world. And I'm a firm believer that the best way to influence the world is by reaching the youth by reaching you know, the younger generation because they are the adults of the future. Um, so my, my desire and my goal with this movie is to make a film that will impact the youth in a positive way uh, and will bring them closer to God and will you know, bring them closer to being better people. You know? So uh, one of my goals, um, with this film is to not only make a religious or faith-based film, but to make a film that anyone can watch, uh, make a film that, you know, you don't have to be a church goer to watch it. You don't have to be, you know, the most religious person to watch it. It's gonna be funny, it's gonna be entertaining, and it's gonna be something that kids and teens will actually want to watch. That is my goal. I feel like a lot of times, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, the I'm not bashing on anybody, but, you know, a lot of the religious themed stuff or whatever, you know, kind of turns kids off, you know, kind of turns teenagers off because it's kind of boring or preachy or, 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 hokey, uh, yeah. or hokey or cheesy. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not bashing on anybody. And there's, you know, everything has an audience. And that's great, uh, but the audience that I'm trying to reach is the everyday teenager. And I believe that we can do that. I think that when I, the reason I, I picked this book is because like I said, I read it when I was a teenager and 
it reached me. And I wasn't, you know, even though I did grow up with some church influence in my life, you know, at that point in time, which I'm trying to remember, it must have been like ninth grade or something. Right. Um, I wasn't, you know, the the most saintly person at that time, you know. Um, and it reached me because it was funny. It was a funny book. Um, and I was like, this is cool. This is cool. So, and I, my hope is that the movie will have the same effect. Well, well you kind of answered my next question is how the, how the book affected you when you read it. And um, I think you pretty much answered that. Um, so, yeah, uh, I believe that, that, you know, we have enough uh, zombie vampire films and nothing against those and horror this and horror that and um you know those are those are fine everything has their place but it's nice to see an uplifting film a film that's that's not afraid of spirituality you know or you know um mentioning you know a film that can speak to the um the secular and non-secular world simultaneously and that that's a good positive thing we need i think more positive messages out there through film and and uh we live in a time of vision of visual mediums you know like you know seeing everything and you know if it's on the big screen the small screen or or you know if you're consuming it digitally or on your phone or tablet or whatever it's it's good to see a a, a good positive faith based message that can appeal to a broad audience beyond faith and and you never know what kind of miracles can happen through that and uh you know getting these positive messages out and especially to teenagers because the um idea of this whole book which uh bob hustedler wrote it was about his life right and uh um, his experiences and correct um i'll tell you something funny about that mm -hmm. um so you know when i read this book i had no idea that's you know the book never tells you anything like that it's a fictional story right um so i had no idea until i actually met with bob in person for the first time after we had already made the deal i already had the rights to the book and everything um months later is when we actually met in person because we had only been talking through emails and you know phone stuff like that um because we live in different states and he when i met with him is when i found out for the first time that it was autobiographical or mostly semi-autobiographical <laughs> right right it's a fictional story that's based he based a right. lot of it on something that really happened correct yes in fact uh he even told me that the um well actually i probably shouldn't tell you that because it'll spoil the story no no yeah no, i really <laughs> don't want to spoil it i, I want to entice right. people to to want to see the film but without giving it away i don't want to be like right. one of those trailers that you know gives away right. the best parts of the well, movie he, <laughs> let's just put it this way he told me what happened in real life with the counterpart of the girlfriend character in the story so oh, i know where the characters ended in real life is what i'm saying okay. which is really interesting um another thing is um i was thinking of as you're you're speaking there um what's the can you kind of generally talk us through the process of um getting rights to the book the film rights to it what was that process like for those right. who maybe never went through that before okay sure um so it all starts with an email you know or a call or whatever however you want to reach out you reach out to an author uh, you know, there's an author who has a story that you like. You just reach out to him however you want to. Um, and you let him know. For me, I just, I let him know. I told him, you know, I have this vision for a movie for this, you know. And, you know, if you think that this is something that you'd be interested, write me back or whatever, which he did. Um, which was really cool. Um, we even found out, you know, he reached out to me immediately. And he said, you know, because I told him, oh, I went to this school, you know, I kind of introduced myself and I told him about me, right, and who I am. And so his son actually graduated from the same college that I did, which was uh, Full Sail University 
in Winter Park, Florida. Um, so that was a cool little connection. Anyway, once we connected, right, then he directed me towards his publisher, right? So, and then basically the talks about the rights, it's, it become, it's a negotiation between the publisher and the filmmaker. So me and the publisher went back and forth for like a week. I mean, just, uh, we had, let's just, throwing the numbers but you know I'll be you know I'd be like well this is how much I'm willing to pay for the rights and then he would hit me back and be like well we're looking at this and then I'd be like well how about this and we just kind of kept throwing numbers at each other and negotiating like well how about you get a percentage of this and it's a lot of number negotiation which I hate to be honest I'm not a numbers person I'm definitely more of a creative person um there's nothing wrong with being a numbers person but it's not my thing Right. Um, so it took about a week uh, of just back and forth emails and word documents, you know, and the contracts going back and forth and changing little words on the contracts because you kind of have to, this is the contract that determines all of the future. Like, you know, it's, it, it sets the groundwork and from there you have to proceed according to that. Generally. Correct. Well, it even talks about what happens after the movie's out and everything. Right. So, so it's, it's, it's not just saying, hey, you have permission to make the movie. It also includes what happens after the movie's made. Like promotion or something? Or does it go um, with part? Partly. Uh, more about, you know, who, you know, like who gets what, you know what I mean? Like just just literally. It's, Percentages. It's a, process. <laughs> it's a process, you know. Right, um, right. Um, so, one question. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to ask is um, uh, Bob Hostetler, will he have any kind of creative control or suggestion or what the proper terminology is? I mean, it, um, obviously, yeah. it's your, when you bought the rights to it and you're making the film, it's, it's technically it's your film. But if he like whispers in your ear, maybe you, this character is a little something different about it or, you know, maybe, you know. Yes, um, he he does. Oh, we lost your photo for a second. Yes, give me one second. Okay, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, but we, yeah. you can just keep talking, yeah, because we're there on the we video go. as well. Yeah, there was um, something technical difficulties. That's fine. Um, yeah. We're good. It might okay. happen again. Hopefully, it doesn't. But I'll just keep talking. That's fine. Um, keep talking. <laughs> so yeah, the wonders of Zoom and all that. Yeah. So anyway, um, he, so back to your question, Bob Hostetler does have creative input. Um, that was discussed during the process that I just mentioned of acquiring the rights and the contracts and all that stuff um, that's in there is how much creative. So that depends on what, whatever deal you come up with, with whoever you're doing it with, right? So for us, so it's personal for everybody. No two okay. projects are going to be the same. Um, so for us, um, all he, he wanted was just, he, which I understood, he, because it is a Christian book, right, because he right. is also a, you know, he is a well-known uh, public speaker and, you know, he has a, his own audience right. as a Christian speaker, you know, he doesn't, he just wanted to make sure I was, cause I mean, we just met when we were doing that deal, right? So he right. Wanted, wanted to make sure I didn't turn the characters into vampires, like you said, you know? Right, or, 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 or anything or like that. Gender swap them for something else or, right. you know, or, or whatever. Or just, you know, come up with something crazy. Now they all have superpowers, you know? Yeah, he just wanted aliens to, or something. <laughs> he just wants to make sure that we stay True loyal to, to the story. story. Yeah. Um, and that's reasonable. That's reasonable. And that's completely reasonable because, you know, whether, because the common person, right, doesn't really know how the film industry works, doesn't really know how the book industry works, right? So they're just going to see book, movie, same thing. So they're just going to assume whatever is in the movie, it's going to be associated with his name as well, right? right? No matter what, you know, no matter what we do. So it's understandable that he just kind of, so he has, basically an approval of the screenplay um 
but not in the sense of where he's going to be like, oh, I don't like this um, because of no reason. It's more of like, this is not, doesn't go with the views of the book, right? So we can change things in the book. If there's just, a fundamental change that goes against the whole overall um, meaning of, of the book, right? And he has the right to say, well, maybe we should change that, you know, right. do it differently like this. Yeah. Makes right, sense. right. Makes total right. sense. But he doesn't have the right to say, finally, this is it. But he has the right to say, well, this is not it because it's messing up, you know, the final meaning, the true meaning of the story, which is great. And I had no problem with it because obviously I love the book and that's why I wanted to make it into a movie. So we are aligned in our vision. And uh, once I've that's talked incredible. to him, it's right. been nothing but great talking to Bob. He is a great man of God and a great man in general. And I, there's no, I don't foresee any problems because even though there's, there might be slight changes in the, in the screenplay, um, mm -hmm. then it, they're not, you know, they stay pretty true to the book. So, right. yeah. It's in line with the vision, the overall vision of the book. Um, what, so, well, you haven't made the film yet, so I can't, I was going to ask you what was the most difficult part of the production, but we haven't gotten there. We're still into development. And uh, as you said, um, people can still contribute at the GoFundMe page. Um, they can just simply search for, they call me AWOL, and that's A-W-O-L, or the Facebook page, they call me AWOL. And they can go there and they can contribute uh, today and and tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, what are um, what's your goal that you're looking for? Um, your your monetary goal with the GoFundMe to to do this the right way, the way that the feature film really deserves to be done. Right. Um, so we want to have a budget of two hundred k for the entire for making the film. Right. Uh, the GoFundMe has a goal of 100K. Um, so the other 100K is coming from investors. Um, that is a whole different side of it. Um, and we have some people that are already talking and you know that's some more on like a producer side of like actual film people that are interested in the project. Um, and I can't really, Talk no, 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 I, I don't. I don't want you to yeah. say stuff. Yeah, you yeah. can't, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and just for general other, interest of anybody who wants to know what yes. the total is and and and, uh, and what it, you know what it's going to. Of course, it's going to cost to pay the crew to pay you know expenses that come along with making a feature film. You know? Correct. What we, we want to do is be able to pay everybody and be able to do it the right way. Um, that is what we want. Uh, we want to film it here in uh, Savannah mm -hmm. and we want to be able to pay everyone and have a great time doing it. Um, the reason we're doing GoFundMe is because what, you know, with Hollywood and with, you know, I have to be careful what I say, um, there's let's just put it this way. There's a certain amount of control that we want to retain while making this film. That's right? incredible. Um, and to do that, we have to kind of be able to master that money, right? So the more people are involved with putting in money, the more, you know. The more and, hands and, are in the and, pie, you know, making the pie as it were. Correct. And some people will have their hands in the pie, like I said, uh, but there are people, but they are people that, we trust and people that we feel confident that are aligned with the vision of right. the film. Um, so GoFundMe allows us to make up the rest of that money so that we can retain that control and we can be fair with everyone and we can make the movie the way we want to make it because we have a really great vision for it and we think it's going to be a really cool thing. We don't want it to be the typical Christian, Christian film we want it to be something that's truly entertaining and truly worth watching. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and we're going to have to have you back after it's complete or whatever, or along, along the way uh, at some point. So you can you tell us what you've learned from this. Um, 
and uh you know through the process because because every filmmaker knows uh when you go into a project you, you pretty much got have the roadmap you know where you're going but sometimes when you get there situations change and things change and and you know you might find a better way to do a, a, attack a, a a part of it you know or or you know whatever there's a billion things that can happen um and um i think i think it's admirable that you're, you're going for a feature film you're not just trying to do a short because you know uh, a lot of people in this town, a lot of people everywhere in the industry, they they just go for, you know, oh, let's just do a short, let's just do a 20 minute short, you know, and that's fine. That's not to, you know, um, put blame or, or, or say that's a bad thing, but but you're going right. fe feature film route with this. So you're doing it that the best of abilities. Um, and so those, uh, unfortunately, that that costs a little bit more to do it the right way and the way that the vision for it is and so um so we've pretty much talked is is there anything else about um they call they call me a wall that you, you'd like to discuss that we haven't touched on any aspects of it um hmm. <laughs> that's the question we can come back to and we can always yeah, come, we can back, come to back to that i mean i think we've talked pretty good about it okay um yeah. Is is this your um um? Do, do, hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to word this. I'm usually never um, at a loss for words. But um, have you have you been through a, an experience on this level before uh, with other films? Um. Or is no. This, no, no so, this is definitely yeah, um, deep dive. But let's say yeah. let's say let's say you're pitching to me. I'm I'm pretending I'm the studio here, and uh, why do I want to take a chance on Rab? What's your name, sir? I I gotta look here and pretend like I'm doing this. Uh, Rabner Emil, uh, sir, Mr. Emil, um, why should we take a chance on you as uh, the director of uh, They Call Me A Wall? <laughs> well, I think I have a very good grasp on the teen movie, teen TV show market today. Um, this is something that I believe is very crucial. I think that a lot of filmmakers, especially in the Christian you know, space, mm -hmm. it's, it's very important for you to be able to make a movie that connects with that generation. You have to understand that generation. Um, and I believe I have a very good grasp of that. Having worked on shows like Outer Banks, which is, right now number one it's like the number one teen show on netflix right now mm. um which is the same audience that we're going for right. so i definitely believe that i bring a lot to the table in that aspect i also have a team that's really great and they're very dedicated and i also have a lot of connections in the savannah area which is going to help make this movie possible right. And there, get in this um, doing the GoFundMe. Um, will you pass, sir? <laughs> On that one. Um, but but do, doing this and and using local talent is important because we one of the things we always talked about here on Savannah on Film is highlighting, uh, spotlighting, whatever you want to call it, um, the local film industry in the Savannah area here. And yes. um, I always talk about. Um, and, and I like the fact that this isn't a horror movie <laughs> personally, you know, and uh, I like the fact that it, it's a positive film with a positive message and and it's pulling from our local pool of talent and um, and that's extremely important if if Savannah is ever going to get to that level that Atlanta is at and not to discredit the success Savannah's film industry has made so far but you know uh we we still have a way to a ways to go and I, I i used to use the uh analogy of uh, only nirvana could come from seattle so you know the whole grunge sound if you're a music fan you know started pretty much there um uh a lot of the college radio scene in the late 80s 80s uh, started with rem out of athens georgia so you know i want to say that you know what all this filmmaking is coming out of savannah it's got the savannah flavor to it and um uh certainly there's you know 
we definitely are a beautiful city, great for backdrops and films. So, um, but we have such a great pool of talent here and it's good to see a positive film, a uplifting film, a feature film that's going to spread a good positive message to, to, uh, especially, uh, teenagers out there and, uh, probably people of all ages, as you said. Um, so, um, we're going to take a few, uh, breaks here that we have to take and then we're going to come back with more from uh rabner amil here on savannah film and i'm your host ed susvich here on uh wruu 107.5 fm lp savannah sailings we're community radio with global soul are you hesitant about receiving the coronavirus vaccination contact your physician it is estimated that 97 percent of all physicians have been vaccinated what do they know that you don't know? Or talk to a friend or relative who has been vaccinated and find out why they have taken it. For more information, contact www.cdc.gov. Need a vaccine? You can visit vaccines.gov or text your zip code to 438827 to find a vaccination site near you. For the information in Spanish, Text VACUNA, 822 Again, if you need a vaccine, you can visit vaccines.gov or text your zip code to 438829 to find a vaccine site in your area. For information in Spanish, text VACUNA, 822 Disasters don't stop even during a pandemic. The Red Cross is here to help when disasters strike. They respond to a disaster every eight minutes. They help people to prepare for disasters and they help prevent disasters such as home fires. The Red Cross saves lives by providing blood. And now free COVID-19 antibody testing is available when donating blood with a Red Cross. More information about Red Cross services and donating blood can be found at www.redcross.org. To be able to go back to the movies. Introduce my family to my new girlfriend. For my husband, who's been a chronic asthmatic his whole life. So I can visit friends in a different state. So I can take my granddaughter out to the park again. So that I can hug my 85-year-old grandma again. We each have our own reason for why we're getting vaccinated against COVID-19. What will yours be? Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org for information on the COVID-19 vaccines. It's up to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council. You're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. WRUU brings you the most diverse and passionate local radio programming on the air in Savannah. This all-volunteer and nonprofit community radio station accepts no money from any form of government. Our diversity and independence is made possible only through the generous financial support of listeners like you. We rely on your annual and ongoing monthly contributions to cover the many costs associated with bringing you our broadcast and web programming. If you are a contributor, thank you. If you're not yet a contributor, please show your appreciation of the role WRU plays in your life by becoming a contributor in any amount. You can donate quickly and easily by credit card or check. Just find the donate and subscribe links at WRU.org. Thanks for listening to and supporting WRUU. And we are back here on Savannah on Film, and I'm your host, Ed Susevich. We're here on WRU 107.5 FM LP, Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And uh, we're continuing to speak with a wonderful gentleman, uh, Rabner Amil. He's a producer, director, actor. Um, he's worked in costuming. He's done a little bit of everything. And if you've worked in the Savannah film industry, you've done a little bit of everything. <laughs> so um, we talked extensively in the first portion of the show here about his uh, feature length uh, uh, film called uh, that's um, in development called They Call Me A Wall, based on the book by Bob 
Hostedler. And uh, there's a GoFundMe on Facebook. You can uh, go there if if you choose to support a filmmaker who's got a, has a strong vision for a feature film. This feature film that he uh, that Rabner's um, going to um, produce and direct. And um, every little bit helps. So uh, you can give what you can, and um, you'll help uh, a great vision come to life. That's inspiring. That's uplifting. And probably in these sometimes dark times, a message that we need to see a film that um, can really help some people. So uh, welcome back. Um, I almost called you Abner. I'm sorry, Rabner <laughs> Mill. Um, Happens a lot. It's uh, fine. Yeah. Um, so uh, just wanted to touch on a few other things you've done, like uh, um, like some of your acting. Um, you are in, I believe it's in post now, if I'm correct. Um, no, uh, yeah. Um, no, excuse me. Uh, Legacies TV series. You're an actor in that. Um, and and of course, with any of this, if you can or cannot, you know, only discuss what you can. I understand. That. No, that's fine. That's fine. No, um, no, I had um, uh, it's a, it's a very minor role. Um, okay. Very, very 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 minor. It's already out. It already came out. Oh, um, already came out. Okay. Legacies. Legacies is a TV show on the CW. It is the current spin up, the spinoff of the Vampire Diaries. So if you know the Vampire Diaries, it's the current spinoff of that show. Um, yeah. No, I worked a, as a PA on yeah. Legacy. Uh, I've worked as a PA on Legacies on several different occasions. Mm. Um, and um, but this year, uh, an opportunity came up, and I actually ended up in one of the episodes on uh, as a featured, you know, as a very small featured uh, role. This, this um, is hazmat guy. No, 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 no. That's old. That's old. Actually, the hazmat guy. Oh, the hazmat okay. guy happened. That was a. a a couple of years ago that was um, in 2019 so yeah 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 no 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 no. that's funny that's funny because i thought you were talking about something else but that's cool, cool. okay so, no that's fine so no what i'm talking about it was um very recent and <laughs> it wasn't hazmat guy hazmat guy was was uh more of an extra um, oh okay. this was okay. a little bit more featured and this was uh Shady Man, Shady number Man number two, two. <laughs> all's well yeah. that ends well episode. Yeah, yeah, Shady yeah, so. Man. yeah. So no, basically, I'm robbing a convenience store. That's what's happening. <laughs> but that's not the true you. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. Uh, so it's me and this other guy, right? And we're right. robbing a convenience store, and we get stopped by one of the vampires' main characters in the show. Um, you know, and we get right. turned into the police. And that's what happens. It's the first scene of episode 10 of the current season of Legacies. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's what that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you got to be on a show where they revived in, this in 2019 um, that I, I'm not ashamed to say, you know, when Dallas was out, Dynasty was the, the next biggest thing. And I probably watched a lot of that. <laughs> You know, it was the 80s, but the revival of it in uh, 2019, the TV series, you were a foundation guest in there. Um, and uh, so so with those two projects, um, wh what were some of your experiences or or in general, let's just say this in general, um, what was like the most interesting shoot that you had, you know, the, or um film or, or or tv or whatever that you were involved with what was like the most interesting most unique okay you... in the acting world or in general because as a pa I definitely... whichever whichever <laughs> whichever is the best story <laughs> um, i would say well i would say it's, as far as interesting uh so i worked as a production assistant on macgyver um, the reboot of the original, because right. the original MacGyver was a show in the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a rebooted version of MacGyver on CBS. Everything is and, rebooted, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, so so I, I worked on the rebooted version of MacGyver as a production assistant um, during the beginning of this year. And 
one of the most interesting shoots was where we definitely we were shooting inside of a mall, uh, but it was a car chase. <laughs> inside of a mall, that's interesting. Yes, so we shot a car chase sequence inside of a mall, um, and that was really interesting. It was really cool to to you know be part of all the different little aspects that goes into that with safety and with stunts and all that. It was it was pretty crazy. Uh, we had. Uh, something like two or three motorcycles uh, chasing a car through the mall. Uh, and then we also had the camera car, right? So we had a car with an arm with a camera on it. Um, so it was, it, was, it was a lot for sure. Um, that sounds like a, a regular day in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, yeah, um, actually, yeah. Um, Interesting enough, the mall that we shot that in was actually the same mall that they used to shoot uh, Stranger Things, uh, the season three of Stranger Things. Um, so if you've seen Stranger Things season three, you know that a lot of it happened in this mall. It was like one of the main locations of the season, and that was the mall. But we were shooting at a different part of the mall. Right. But it was kind of cool because I kind of snuck away during lunch and I went and I went into the side that shot Stranger Things and I would just kind of peeped out at the set. So oh, that was nice. Awesome. Took, some, took some pictures that nobody knows about, you know. Um, but yeah, no, but it was really cool because we had that car chase in the mall and then we ended the day by, you know, smashing MacGyver's car smashes through the entrance of the mall so oh. we literally destroyed the entrance of the mall with a car and i have a nice little video of it uh, and we just the car just they basically production paid the mall to be able to destroy the entrance wow. so that was fun yeah <laughs> that that that's a lot you know that's well and, and that 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 cost a pretty penny i'm sure we're gonna well, destroy sure. your entrance here yeah can we can we just blow a car through this door you don't mind right it's fine there's some money <laughs> just throw a tarp over it'll be no and it's not even like you know a lot of people when i tell them that story they're like oh you know it wasn't an abandoned mall and it was like no no it's it's operational there was actually stores that were open while we were shooting wow yeah i don't think they were too happy about us driving a bunch of cars through the mall while they were trying to conduct business but <laughs> especially if that's that random day you're showing up at the mall and you're like oh dear this is not good yeah no. <laughs> um so you've done a lot a lot of things in the industry um and and you've got a lot more wonderful things i probably said that on the last time you were here on the show and i'm i'm glad to finally get you back on this show and um but what are and i ask this a lot what what are your um thoughts on the industry from since the last time we've talked um the savannah industry film industry and the industry in whole what what are we doing right what can we do better huh. oh, that's wow. a, broad, a broad question you know that is how a you feel real broad question yes um Okay, so what are we doing right and what can we do better? Um, you know, we're obviously doing a lot of things right. Uh, the industry is flourishing here in Georgia. Um, I'm talking about both Savannah and Atlanta. Um, so I think things that we could do better, um, well, let me put it this way. One thing that I love about Savannah is the uh, mixers which you mentioned earlier oh yeah um, yeah yeah there um, are that i think that's a great idea so to the savannah film commission that you know hats off to you that that's a great idea um i think that it's something that is very beneficial for anybody starting out in the film industry because you know you you hear it all the time it's not what you know it's who you know, you know. Yeah. yeah, you hear it all the time, right? And and it's it's true. Something that's true, yes. Um, so I think that's a great opportunity for anybody trying to start up. Those mixes are a great idea. So I think something we could do better, right, is maybe have them more often. Um, we we definitely we have them about once a year, I believe. 
right now? They used to be a little bit more frequent than that. And then, uh, and then of course, COVID. I'm not saying we got to have them every day. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It loses its, you know, but maybe twice, you know, or three times a year, something like that. Um, but I think they're great. I think they're awesome. Um, so I think that that's something definitely that Savannah is doing very well. Uh, I'm sure Atlanta has something maybe i haven't heard of it um everybody that i've met in savannah they, I mean, they do for like savannah. sound mixers i know and, and 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 other stuff you know um right and uh and so that you know that's good but you know um we mention atlanta a lot and atlanta is 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 popular savannah is and all the fantastic incentives tax incentives because the bottom line that's what you know brings them here and then they right. see the city and fall in love with everything savannah has to offer but um atlanta and we may have we may have some uh, more talk about infrastructure here coming up soon um there's a new studio another new another new studio coming to town I heard. and I heard. Uh, this one seems like it's legit and um more, we're going to definitely be talking about that more in, in, in future shows and um but the basis of this show, one of the cornerstones of Savannah on film here, this show that I created is talking about building that infrastructure and seeing since 2018, since we started this show, that's something that I've always asked, you know, what can we do on the infrastructure, you know, what can, and so, you know, having that physical space dedicated to film, whether it's grip electric or whatever, a sound stage, I don't think is too much to ask. It just, as we've always said, it's about putting somebody putting their money where their mouth is kind of thing. And, and, uh, you know, yeah. I will, I will believe it when I see it, when I see the ground, not the groundbreaking, but when I start seeing the walls going right. up, when I see the doors open. And, um, so, um, I'm excited for infrastructure that that's coming finally. I, it, it, to me, it means it's, it's a sign that Savannah is, um, ready to play on the level with atlanta you know atlanta has the infrastructure uh savannah has lost a lot of talented people to atlanta and it's to atlanta's credit because they attract you know the bigger studios the major studios not that savannah does it but we don't do it frequently enough i'm seeing it more than i've seen it and of course, the pandemic is the is the big asterisk, you know, with everything with the film industry, with, you know, theaters and everything else. So, of right. course, there's going to be that, you know, you know, there was that vacuum of time where, you know, nothing existed. It seemed like, you know, everything was on pause, on hold. And now that things have ramped up, um, that's why for me personally, it's it's so important that, you know, we get past this pandemic, we get through it together and we, you know, we get to the next stage so we can we can make films like they call me a wall we can make films like you know um other feature films and and, and you know blockbusters i you know i want to see top gun three if there's ever going to be one i doubt it but i, I want to see i want to see that <laughs> filmed in Savannah. i want to see dog fights over tybee island i don't know you know um like you know the stuff that was in the film devotion we saw that's going to be a feature film that I, I was fortunate enough to be part of um it, well, hey one of the know, departments we, um, we had uh, the Underground Railroad uh, right. film in Savannah, and it's got seven Emmy nominations. I don't know if you knew about that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's uh, so Barry Jenkins. Barry Jenkins, yeah. yeah. So to the credit of Barry Jenkins. Um, yeah, I, I want to see. You know, crew, I, I want Spielberg. To, yeah, I'm sorry. I want Spielberg to come and make a film in Savannah. You know, <laughs> I want another Forrest Gump, but you know, you know, the next level, and uh, you know. But uh, you know, whatever the next Star Wars film, they can film here, <laughs> and uh, I'll do anything. I promise. No, <laughs> I'm a Star Wars nut. So, um, but yeah. Um, so there's uh, there's there's a lot more that we could talk about, but um, we're the clock clock on the wall is kind of ticking away, telling us it's it's time to wrap things up. So, just to reiterate, um, Rabner here has a, just give me a quick tagline again for those who might just be tuning in at the last minute here um, for They Call Me A Wall, a feature film that you are producing and directing and that you have a GoFundMe for. And it, okay, just tell, tell us real quick about that, if you will. <laughs> well, 
first of all, thank you for having me uh, on the show. And a quick type tagline for they call me AWOL. Here it goes. Uh, when a smooth talking teen slacker learns his Christian girlfriend is transferring to his school, he has two weeks to turn his entire life and reputation around before she realizes he's not the person he pretends to be at church. He has a plan, but can it really cover up his lies? So basically, this is a movie that is geared towards the teenage you know, audience. And it's a movie that brings a positive message about being truthful and being true to yourself. Um, and I think it's going to be a really great project that we're going to film here locally, and it's going to bring a lot of people together. And where can people go uh, for the GoFundMe? That the goal is one hundred thousand. That yes, we're trying to raise. So, so the goal. Right. For, yes, the goal for the GoFundMe is a hundred thousand, and you can find it just by going to GoFundMe.com and searching for "They Call Me a Wall." Or you can go on Facebook to look for the Facebook page. Just type in, they call me AWOL, and it'll come up. Or you can find me also on Facebook and Instagram as Ravner Amell. Okay, and we'll, we'll put some of those links in, in, in the description of the, the video here. And, uh, and, and all anything, that. anything that you can give helps the cause. Um, we cannot make this movie without the help of everyone. And it's going to be something that is going to be for everyone. And Savannah and surrounding areas, if you listen to the show, even if you're not in Savannah, we really have a great talented group of folks here, uh, film professionals here. And this Rabner Amil, he is one of them, a producer and director, and he is trying to bring this vision to life in a feature film. So um, we really talk about supporting the local Savannah industry, the creatives, and this gentleman is one of them. And this is a great way that if you choose to, that you can support local filmmakers. So um, all wishes uh, and uh, for success for you, as, as always, Rabner. And uh, thank you again for being back on the show. Um, and we're going to wrap up here and here on Savannah on Film. I'm your host, Ed Susevich, and you're listening here on WRU 107.5 FM LP, Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And I want to thank everybody who joined us today. And uh, just check out our Facebook page if you want to like and follow there. Our YouTube channel, we're looking for subs there, subscribers, so you can follow and find new content. You'll see this video version um, of this, assuming the lights don't go out. Because first time we try to record this, <laughs> we had this weird power outage on my, you know, it's weird. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. It's always live. So um, anyway, uh, thank you all, everybody. And I'm going to roll the... Uh, uh, outro here and uh, thank y'all for listening to Savannah on Film and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. You have been listening to another episode of Savannah on Film where we give a voice to the Savannah film community. Please like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. This program was originally broadcast on 107.5 FM in Savannah, Georgia and worldwide on www.wruu.org. Join us next time for more intriguing insights into the vibrant Savannah film community here at Savannah on Film.